Ben Pierce is supposed to say action. <laughs> Minnesota MMA News, I'm here with Travis Rinder. Trav, uh, Andre's even running the camera, so yeah, yeah. that's, that's why we're laughing. I don't know what my motive is. <laughs> but, uh, anyway, we're here to talk for one reason. Target Center. Yes. It's 28. Oh. Floyd Hodges, mm -hmm. the hitman. Mm -hmm. Saw an interview uh, just a little bit ago with, with Mr. Rod. Yeah, for Game On. <laughs> Doesn't sound right, but... I know. Uh, what, what do you know about Floyd, first of all? The dude's got just knockout power out of nowhere. Just, bam, puts people to sleep, you know. He just took steps to the third round. It was rule of no contest for strikes to the back of the head or something. Have you uh, seen that fight yet? I, I haven't seen it. Good. I haven't seen any video. I just heard different sources and whatever. But that wasn't there, not at all. Um, but he's dangerous, and that's uh, a big problem. You know, I don't think I fought anyone that had the knockout power like he does and puts people to sleep like that. So, but it seems like it's mostly his hands. It doesn't seem like he's he's more a boxer. Yeah, I mean, I mean, he throws kicks and stuff like that, but I don't think it is. Uh, you know, jujitsu is up to par with you know some of the guys here. I mean, definitely not diva style or anything. So, well, who I'm is thankful I have true. him to train with. Right, right. So what, uh, when you face a guy like that with that kind of powerful hands, uh -huh. now you're not normally a guy that goes up and says, I, I gotta get out of the ground. No. You normally like to stand and bang with the guy. Oh, the one that gets taken to the ground. Well, but. that usually happens too, but what, uh, what's the game plan against a guy like that that obviously you don't want to get, you don't want to get hit by him? No, but it's the catch point too because you have someone that'll stand with me and trade, which is usually doesn't happen. Usually I fight a smaller guy like him that's a wrestler and they take me down and then it's just a grappling match. Um, but, you know, I'm obviously taller, range should play into it, we'll see how that goes, but you want to trade, but you don't want to trade because you don't want to get that fluke knockout and, you know, lose it because of something stupid like that, but it's, I mean, it could happen against anyone, you can go against, you know, a straight jiu-jitsu guy and he just ducks his head, hits you, and you're asleep, so. Right, right. It's, uh, obviously, if it hits the ground, you feel super confident, but, but your training here has uh, yeah. set you up to be... Um, yeah, I mean, everyone I've gone with is just such a, a, a huge wrestler and so big and strong. I mean, the same type of body type as him, but add like 30 pounds to it. So they're just freaks of strength and stuff like that, like he is. I mean, I know he's got endurance and I know he's got strength for days. So um, I think if it goes to the ground, yeah. I mean, I'm confident and just got to take my time, be technical, and don't make stupid small mistakes that he'll capitalize, stand up, and bam. Well, before we go on completely, but let's talk about your last target center fight you fought Rocco. Mm -hmm. um, it seemed like you had a little chip on your shoulder for that one. There was some talk that you know, he's kind of an up-and-coming prospect. And I know he talked a lot, saying how confident he was. Yeah. It seemed like you had a chip on your shoulder in that fight. I think you beat I, him up pretty good. I think I was more bitter about just the uh, the opponent changes and stuff like that. It had nothing to do with the promoters. It had to do with the people I was supposed to fight, backing out and changing their mind. No, I want more money to fight him, things like that. And it does, you know, when you're set for an opponent and then it changes and changes and changes. And, you know, it's just like, all right, fine. And then you get, you know, glad he's confident, glad he wanted to come into the fight winning. I don't want him to come in thinking, like, oh, I'm going to lose, you know, and just that could be it. But it's, you know, just want to go out there and show, you know, this is what I want to do. And if you're going to throw guys in, it's going to be a certain caliber. And then these guys that back out and things like that. They say they want to fight me forever, and then what comes down to it, they don't. I don't know. It's just irritating. Same thing this time, though, too. You had opponent change. Now, a little bit different scenario and a little bit more time off yeah. this time. Yeah, um, that, I mean, it was kind of, that's the other thing about local shows and things like that, with these guys that fight, you know, North Dakota and Wisconsin or wherever else, is they can get called up to go fight somewhere, or mm -hmm. they have a fight already, you know, and they're going to fight a couple months later, but they get, you know, knocked out in 90 day suspension, so that's, that's kind of okay. the way it goes, but I mean, it happens in every level. Right. Now, a lot of people probably didn't get to see it, <clears throat> but you had a fight up in Canada. Mm -hmm. Talk about that fight, obviously. Wasn't how you wanted it. No. Um, yeah, tough opponent. Yeah, it, it's it's a tough opponent, and it's kind of a learning process here too. Um, I had been here. I've only been here for like eight or nine months. So when I took that fight. I've had I think I had four months under my belt here. Going up there, um, you know my weight and things like that. I think I cut too soon, and it was really. I mean, I showed up in Canada only like eight pounds over. So I think that that played a part into it. I wasn't as big as I should have been, and he was a, I mean, like a three-time national champ, Canadian wrestler, and a jiu-jitsu black belt. So yeah, he's gonna take me down. But he was quite a bit stronger than I had, you know, thought he was gonna be coming in there. And I mean, his his weight, his base was. Incredible. 
incredible. Yeah. He, was, he was tough to move. And yeah, I did. I did take a loss and made a lot of mistakes and gave me a lot to think about, especially coming back in here and, you know, things to put in my head. It's like, you know, maybe, you know, I thought, I'm like, hey, we can get up there, you know, we can take these fights and stuff like that. And it, it did kind of, it was humbling, you know. It's, it's just like going with, with these guys here and stuff like that, so. So now you mentioned weight. <clears throat> How's your weight for this fight? Where? Good. Um, Feeling strong? With, yeah, I'm working with uh, George Lockhart for Nutrition Wise and um, feeling good. He's got, you know, I felt a lot better during my camp, energy wise, and haven't had the injuries and no problem like that. So that's been good. Um, and everything's on par for making weight and that. So good. I might have made weight enough times that it shouldn't be an issue if I got to suck it up and sit in the sauna for another couple hours. That's just how it is. Uh, before I also forget, I wanted to say credit to you for sticking it out here. Because, you know, when your gym broke up, there were a lot of guys that everybody kind of scattered. And, and there have been a lot of guys that come here. And obviously, you've been doing this for a long time. But I'm certain that you still came in here and got beat up pretty good. And, and yet, you stuck with it. Yeah. It, it, it was, um, Lynn's talked to me about it after my last Target Center fight, about how guys come in here and just, you get trashed. Yeah. There's no way of you don't come in here and do well. You think you're going to do okay. You can go to other places like, yeah, I can hold my own. You come here and get your ass handed to you. But, you know, there's some guys you do well against and other dimes you just you keep getting beat and keep getting beat. And his thing was guys getting that mindset and then they go into a fight thinking the same way. You know, they, they lose all their confidence in that first couple months. And it's true. I mean, it, it wears on you because you're going with such high-level guys. But then when you go against, uh, you know, someone else from somewhere else, it's a whole different story. Nice. Now, the first time I met this guy right here, he was an EMT of Jamie Clare's mm -hmm. show. I was like, in the bar. In the bar, like, the, actually it was one of the, I think it was one of his last shows too. It was a big one in the, in the big bar in Graham. But uh, now, are you a doctor yet? No. I'm a nurse. I'm I nurse, know, nurse, I know, nurse but you've been, you've been in school for a thousand years. Getting there. Are you, I, is I'm that something you want to do? I'd love to be a doctor, yeah. yeah. I'm a, I, I want to end up with my doctorate in nursing. Okay. So I'm just slowly working there. I mean. With the wife and kids and bills and the house and everything else and fighting, it takes you know time, but we'll get there by the time I die. So and you said you have to call me Doctor the Hurricane. Obviously, so. I'm getting close to doing it already. But yeah. are you ER? Is that where you said you're working now? Yeah, urgent care right now. Urgent care. Yeah. Okay. So I worked. Uh, but you a see a lot of, of everything there. Yes. <laughs> yeah, you like that though? You yeah, like that yeah. Because yeah. it's we're busy for eight hours straight at night. You never really get to sit down. You get to see all sorts of really odd things, and then. Friday, Saturday nights, and full moons, you get to see some really strange people. And meet Friday some, 13th, you just had. Meet some odd people, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, there's nights where you just, you wonder what is wrong with, with humans. Nice. All right, make your, we'll wrap it up here, make your pitch, tell people to get out to Target Center. What, uh, Target Center, they, April 28th. Make sure to check out Cage Banner. Make sure to check out Get Some Fight Gear. Uh, MMANews.com. We got, we got And every other sponsor out there, so. Cage Banner, for sure. Yeah, yeah, they're good with that. Fighters, good stuff. check out Cage Banner. Right? And we'll hook you up, too. Target good Center. stuff for a good price. Target Center offering specials for um, all the guys fighting on there if they want to get their stuff awesome. done. Yeah, so. you got a little bit of time, not much time, but get it in and see what you can do. Yep. All right, Travis Ryder, thanks, buddy. Thank you.